This is going to be an overview of VMware's hybrid cloud solution, HCX. My name is Paul Craddock. I'm a senior cloud and DevOps architect here at Round Tower Technologies, and I'm based out of the Cincinnati, Ohio area. So what is HCX? So primarily, when, uh, when you hear a customer that is looking for uh, or has already engaged uh, VMware Cloud on AWS uh, as a solution and chosen that that is the way they want to go. Um, HCX is going to be is going to be the answer to some of the next conversations uh, that come out. It's going to fill needs for things like rep VM replication or doing disaster recovery, doing uh, network extension, and you know plenty of other use cases. So that's what HCX is. It basically takes a lot of on-prem constructs and it, it abstracts them and, and stretches them into your SDDC on VMR Cloud on AWS. So why? Uh, why use HCX? So HCX paired with VMR Cloud on AWS allows you to, uh, to move mission critical, you know, or dev test, really any workloads uh, with minimal operational overhead. So what, that, what does that mean? Well, what that means is basically you're going to be able to either live migrate without losing you know, communication without the application downtime, any any virtual machines, or it, or uh, reboot into cloud or do disaster recovery, um, all all using HCX built right into the right into the platform. Who who needs this? I think we've already touched on that this already. This is um, again anyone who's looking to um, to really get the most out of a hybrid cloud experience for their chosen VMware cloud on AWS. The way Round Tower uses this is to seamlessly migrate. Um, you know tens to hundreds of, of VMs um, bi-directionally in parallel uh, on through secure channels uh, over existing WAN. There's no need to uh, to, to spin up uh, or to, to buy dedicated circuits or direct connects or anything like that. Uh, we're able to use existing WAN and just uh, set up secure VPN tunnels to, uh, to do all of this work. So some of the HCX features. It's an all-in-one migration tool. So this is going to include your replication, your network extension, and your failover and automation. So whereas you may be familiar with other products, uh, Visa Replication or NSX or SRM that are kind of standalone products that have some interdependencies, this is all in one. Uh, it takes some bits from kind of all of those products and, and brings them together. And uh, you may you may be wondering, uh, wow, this is some pretty good technology that came out really quickly along with VMware Cloud on, on AWS. The, way, the reason that is is because this is actually not new technology. Uh, HCX has been around for uh, for years, just really on the back end. It's something that solution providers, you, that VMware gave to solution providers uh, that were running kind of private clouds uh, to, to migrate people into and out of. So, uh, so the technology is proven, it's been around, and uh, it's just now been made available publicly through, through the VMC offering. It supports vCenter 5.1 and above, which is a huge benefit. Uh, our customers, especially customers that are going to be just doing one-way migrations into VMC, uh, don't have to upgrade their, their on-prem infrastructure to get to VMC just to destroy all of it. So you can drop it right into a 5.1 uh, environment and connect right into, you know, this now 6.7, you know, installation on a VMC. NSX is completely optional, so there's no need to have on-prem NSX. If you got it, great. Uh, not a problem, but uh, no need to buy that licensing to get the functionality. Uh, and we already touched on the test live migration scenarios, and then the single or bulk migrations. We'll get in. We'll get into that. Let's uh, take a quick look at the uh, just the topology uh, from a high level of HCX. So on the left, we've got our on-prem infrastructure here. On the right, we have uh, our VMC installation uh, and our SDVC. And so on the left, we've got, uh, you can see we've got four major appliances here on both sides. And you can see two IPsec tunnels. So the top, the green one, is going to be uh, 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 the first tunnel that's used for replication traffic. So uh, when you're replicating disks for either DR or live migration, they're going to use that tunnel. The second dedicated tunnel is for uh, network extension. So you can see on the left, we've got our web and app networks. Uh, going through that IPsec tunnel and popping back out on the VMC side, it's still the web and app networks. And uh, that is a, a, a separate dedicated IPsec tunnel. So the four pieces we have are HCX Manager, the management plane, obviously, and then our Cloud Gateway and WAN Optimizer, 
those are uh, going to be in charge of uh, of replication, disaster recovery, those those features, migration, uh, and um, and the layer two extension or concatenator there. That is what stretches layer two, so you don't have to re-IP. As we uh, just said, there's no need to change IP addressing. So this is a little bit of a, uh, a deeper view of what happens. So we've got our VM on the left here, uh, our 192.168.10.20, uh, and on the, on the right, our 10.21. And uh, communication is just, just shown coming out uh, out of that VM into their local HCX network extension appliance across that secure tunnel across the internet, and then picked up by our remote HCX network extension appliance, uh, de-encapsulated and delivered directly to that VM network A, where that destination VM picks it up. Uh, again, that's uh, basically you're encapsulating layer two over a layer three construct or just the, the internet in general across that secure tunnel. A very similar, this is uh, HX cross cloud vMotion. So this is where we are actually live migrating machines, live or scheduled um, migrating machines. You know, the disks are every, and, and everything are replicated through the tunnel that this uh, HX interconnect creates, comes through on the remote side and is then all written out to the vSAN on the SDDC and re-instantiated when you either go into a DR scenario or if you do a migration. One of the other nice features about the HCX product is that it integrates directly with the vSphere web client. So there's not like a separate pane of glass you have to go to to uh, to manage, maintain, do all these or migration activities, or really even do the implementation. Once you have that the initial OVA, the manager stood up, you register that with your vCenter. You then register that with the uh, manager on the uh, SDDC side. And from that point on, everything else is is deployed through the web client. The uh, the updates are all done. As you can see here, we've got an update in the screenshot. All of the, the interconnect, all the migrations, all the DR, the administration, everything's done right directly through, through the web client. So um, you get some information, you get a bunch of information actually when you when you click in. You've got you can see any active migrations that are going on, you can see um, how many migrations have occurred on the right. You can see uh, if you had multiple uh, vCenters hooked in or multiple SDDCs, you can see the cloud resource usage across all of your different environments. And then you can see any active alerts right there in that, in that uh, status window as well. There's also activity logs. So this is nice from an audit perspective. You can uh, easily look back through and see uh, what was done, when it was done, exact Times. Uh, you can see when networks are extended, when migrations were kicked off, when replication jobs started. So there's a lot of information that can be easily viewed. You don't like have to log into a, a command line or anything and dump all these logs to find it. So the HCX setup. As I mentioned before, the first thing you do is deploy the manager, and then you hook into an, exist, an existing HCX manager within the uh, VMware Cloud solution. Uh, from that point on, once that, once that uh, management plane is set up, you then just have to uh, click Install HCX Components there on the top left and begin to roll through and deploy the different, the different components. So first thing you set up is your cloud gateway. This brings up that first IPsec tunnel that we talked about. So uh, deploying is as is, is, is easy as click it, next, next, add some IP address information, um, yeah. tell it where you want it to deploy, you know, resource groups, storage, that kind of thing, and uh, click finish. And then, and then the manager actually go ahead, goes ahead and deploys it also on prem as well as within the SDDC. So you get uh, both sides come up at the same time, and they begin to talk to each other. They initiate the tunnel, and within a few minutes, you see, uh, as you can see in the screenshot here, uh, the tunnel up status on the right. The WAN optimizer is then deployed, and this allows you to do compression and deduplication across that WAN circuit for your migration traffic. Uh, and then you can, as you can see here, uh, you can also set tunnel maximums. So uh, this is an actual customer site, which is why many of the things are, are blanked out. We don't want, uh, don't want people seeing the actual information, the actual SDDC uh, you know, connection. But for this particular client, they, uh, they had a 300 megabyte internet connection. And when we came in and began the project, they increased that to one gig for, to cover replication. And we just simply set the WAN optimizer at a 700 megabit cap 
to allow business to continue because they knew they could stay within the 300 meg they had uh, and just allow us to consume the 700 megabytes that they had purchased for for this project. So that's a, that's a nice nice feature. Um, and then after those uh, those uh, pieces are up, you then if layer two extension and the ability to not re uh, re IP uh, if those are requirements, you would then just uh, deploy one or multiple network extension appliances. So these are the uh, the appliances on the bottom. And as you can see, again, when you deploy those, there the cloud side also is brought up, and they uh, begin to communicate and uh, negotiate a tunnel, uh, an IPsec tunnel for those layer two constructs to flow through. We have multiples here, and I'll explain why that uh, why that is uh, when we get a little later in the presentation. So as far as extending networks, it's uh, it's just as easy as when you deployed the appliances. You uh, simply select the network that you want to create or want to extend, click the extend button, and then uh, tell it the on-prem gateway and the CIDR range for the for that uh, particular the port group. It then begin it then communicates with the SDDC, automatically spins up the appropriate port group in the SDDC. It labels it similarly, so you know so you can human readably you can tell which which is the other side. And it also makes some intelligent connections between them logically. So when you do a, a migration or a DR exercise and you tell a VM to fail over or you tell it we're going to migrate you up, it automatically knows which port group to choose based on the source port group that uh, that was extended. So it's a, it's a nice feature. And then um, coming back is, you know, if you want to unextend a network, all you have to do is, again, right click, click unextend the uh, the connections are broken between them two. The port group on the STDC side is uh, is decommissioned, and now you're back on prem. Let's talk a little bit about the HCX migration feature. So we see here our migration pane here. Um, again, redacted a little bit to uh, you know to abstract any sensitive information. But once you need to migrate a machine, you basically just click in here, and this uh, this GUI pops up, and there's a top default options section here that allows you to globally set uh, set things. So if you're doing 50 machines, you don't have to click all these 50 different times. So let's say you are doing a bulk migration here where you're, you, you can force VMs to power off on the source side. You can retain MAC address. You can automatically upgrade virtual machine hardware, virtual machine tools. You can select which container you want it to go in from a resource group perspective, select the storage, select whether it's thin or thick, you know, remove snapshots before you move the machine, um, unmount any ISOs that wouldn't be available in the SDDC, and then select bulk migration. At that point, you click through whatever VMs you want to move, click next and finish. Now, uh, with a bulk migration, what's going to happen is it's going to ask you for a window to for, for migration. So if you were doing, say, it's a one-way uh, migration with 100 VMs, you know, you might select a month out to allow the machines enough time to synchronize. And then uh, if that window uh, moves, no problem. You just simply update it, either take it further out or bring it further in, uh, assuming you're in synchronization. So once your VMs are fully in sync and that migration window opens, the system will automatically begin to move the machines over and execute whatever options that you had selected. If you told it to upgrade virtual machine tools and hardware, it's going to do that. So, um, and, and in, in those migrations, there is downtime because you're going to reboot to, uh, to upgrade tools and then hardware and those things. Now, if you wanted to do a live vMotion, it's very similar, except for instead of selecting bulk migration, you select just vMotion. Select the machines that you want to, to vMotion. And what happens is it begins to synchronize all the, all the data disks. Once everything's completely in sync, the migration begins. Uh, automatically, and uh, there is no setting of schedules, and then the machine simply is running in the SDDC after the vMotion is done. Um, that the only caveat with that is that um, you cannot do things like upgrade virtual machine hardware or tools because those things require reboots. Uh, also, you will not be taking full advantage of the CPU uh, that uh, in the SDDC the the extra instruction sets you have to kind of reboot to take advantage. So, uh, so just be aware that there are some slight caveats. If you have a use case that is completely zero downtime, then it does fit, uh, but it, it is slightly better to 
reboot into cloud to get some of those maintenance options uh, taken care of. From a DR perspective, it's similar to, uh, to a migration. Uh, when you select a machine to protect, uh, a similar screen comes up to what one we just saw, except for instead of asking you if you want to vMotion or bulk migrate, uh, you are basically just replicating the VM, and what is it, once it is in sync, it is then uh, available to select and either test or do full DR uh, failover. You can select uh, your RTOs and RPOs, so you, uh, you know, how often, how much data do you want to lose? Uh, you can tell it, um, you can tell it, you, you know, how many snapshots to take for uh, in a given period of time and how, how many to keep. Uh, this, this can be helpful if you want to recover to different points in time versus your current point in time. If maybe there were data corruption, uh, you know, just now, but you could recover back to an hour of the snapshot. So that could be useful depending on your use case. Um, once you do in a full DR scenario, you fail over, and then once the source site is back, get back in sync with the source and fail back. Very similar to you know, similar principles to to an actual you know to the other DR products. The the test DR functionality is kind of brings it up on the source side and allows you to, to just shut it down and clean up. There's not a, it doesn't replicate any data back for those tests. So this is a this is a little bit of a a deeper look at the network extension appliance. So on the left, we've got our HCX appliance, we've got our vSphere, and we've got our optional NSX on-prem. We've got our distributed switch and uh, and port source port group from that VM. So we see that that VM is, um, is, is being replicated across the WAN. So it's going into that network extension appliance across that top tunnel and uh, coming out on the other side, the, uh, the SDDC side on the right. We see in the middle that this buys us the ability to do what we've already talked about, scheduled bulk migrations, cross-cloud vMotions. Um, it also does dedupe and compression. So, uh, and that's actually, uh, we've, we've seen that in live, in live scenarios, uh, do as much as four or five X compression uh, on, on what the data that comes into the optimizer versus the data that flows out. Uh, and then on the bottom, again, uh, this diagram isn't necessarily showing it, but that's that secondary tunnel allows you to do that uh, that layer two network extension with no changes to Mac or IP. And that's that zero downtime migration as well because communication will flow through that tunnel. This is a bit of an eye chart. I put it in here, you know, you can pause the video and look at it uh, a little more detailed if you need to. But uh, what is really important to note is the, the network flows in red. So there's only four of them. On the right, you need to know that uh, the HCX manager on the enterprise side, it has to communicate out to this uh, management plane at the top right there, uh, over 443. Shouldn't be a problem for most places. And then the manager also communicates with the uh, HCX cloud manager on the right in that red box, um, uh, also over 443. That entire red box are the, are the appliances that are sitting on the SDDC. And then the, uh, the HCX interconnect and then the extensions those actually use UDP 500 and UDP 4500, as well as 443. So those are the only couple of ports you may have to make sure are open and outbound, depending on your different requirements. Uh, everything on the left in green, blue, and purple um, should be probably open by default, but if there's a very segmented uh, environment where there's firewalls between all kinds of uh, you know, VLANs, uh, you, you may need to open this up. So I've included it here to kind of show you uh, what may or may not be need to be open. So some of the HCX gotchas, things to, to keep in mind. So uh, the first is the network extension appliances are per vCenter and per distributed switch. Uh, distributed switch is a requirement. And uh, and if you have multiples, so if you have maybe a, a vCenter that's got uh, one for production, one for dev, one for PCI or something like that, you'll need multiple appliances for each. The same manager can manage those, but you will need to deploy separate extension appliances. It's not really that big a deal. It's not extra licensing. It's just an extra IP address and potentially some extra firewall rules. So this third point here must have a routed vMotion network for live migration. Uh, this is something where uh, most, uh, you know, uh, best practice for a long time have been to not route vMotion because it didn't need to. It just was talking to the, the ESXi host next to it. But for, for our use case, 
you have to have a routed vMotion network because it's got to it's got to go uh, from the vMotion network out to that you know, WAN optimizer appliance that's going to go over the internet. So we we may depending on the uh, way the network set up, we may have to add a gateway. We may actually have to route that traffic. Now um, it is completely secure, so that's something that uh, you know, to be aware of that it is going to travel through an encrypted tunnel uh, through across the internet, so you don't have to worry about uh, about that plain text transmission. And the fourth point here is that um, HDX cannot extend itself. So if there's a network that it's on, so if it's on VLAN 100, uh, you cannot extend VLAN 100 into the cloud because uh, all of the traffic flows for all the other VLANs that are being extended are flowing through that HDX appliance uh, and it can't extend itself. So just something to be aware of, you will want a dedicated uh, VLAN that's not in scope for for extension to place those uh, network extension appliances on. So if there are any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Paul Craddock, and uh, you can uh, also find me out on Twitter, at P Craddock. Uh, so if there's any other questions around HCX or implementations, feel free. I'd love to have a chat. Thank you.